Imagine a bird of prey so large and powerful that it could hunt creatures 10 to 15 times its own weight. This was Haas Seagull, an extinct giant eagle that once ruled the skies over New Zealand's South Island. Weighing up to 15 kilograms or 33 pounds or more, and with a wingspan reaching about 3 meters or 10 feet, Haas Seagull holds the title of the largest and heaviest eagle known to have existed. For thousands of years, it was the apex predator of New Zealand's prehistoric ecosystems, earning it nicknames like the Flying Tiger for its formidable hunting abilities. This eagle's story, from its physical prowess and hunting tactics to its sudden disappearance, offers a fascinating glimpse into the unique natural history of New Zealand. Haas Seagull was not only enormous, but also powerfully built. Females, as in most raptors, were larger than males. Female eagles weighed roughly 10 to 18 kilograms or 22 to 40 pounds, while males were about 9 to 12 kilograms or 19.8 to 26.5 pounds. In size, it dwarfed modern eagles. Even the hefty harpy and stellar sea eagles, typically under 9 kilograms, were about 40% smaller in body mass. Its wings, though broad, were relatively short for its size, spanning approximately 2.5 to 3 meters in adults. This wing structure was an adaptation for life in dense forests. Shorter, powerful wings and a long tail gave Haas eagle maneuverability among trees rather than long distance soaring. The eagle inhabited the forests and shrublands of the South Island, especially the drier eastern woodlands and valleys east of the Southern Alp. Bones have been found across much of the South Island and one site on Stewart Island, indicating it ranged from coastal lowlands up into mountain areas. As the top predator in an ecosystem with no native land mammals aside from bats, Haas seagull filled a niche occupied elsewhere by big cats or wolves. It truly was a bird that ruled the land from above. In appearance, Haas seagull combined traits of both giant raptors and carry-on birds. It had a robust body, massive musculature, and extremely strong legs to launch its bulk into the air. Its talons were enormous. The hind claw could exceed 10 centimeters in length, comparable to a tiger's claws. These dagger-like talons and powerful feet, as large as tiger paws, were capable of piercing bone. Indeed, fossils of moa skeletons bear deep puncture marks made by the eagle's claws. The beak was equally formidable, about 11 to 13 centimeters long, curved, and strong enough to tear into tough carcasses. Interestingly, the skull had some vulture-like features, and Maori rock art even depicts the bird with a pale or possibly featherless head. This suggests Haas seagull may have had shorter feathers or bare skin on its head, an adaptation seen in vultures to stay clean while feeding inside carcasses. In life, its plumage was described in Maori oral tradition as a mix of black, white and greenish yellow with a prominent bunch of red feathers on its head. Whether soaring between trees or perched high on a crag, Haas seagull must have been an awe-inspiring sight, a huge dark eagle with a piercing gaze, perfectly evolved for dominating its domain. Haas seagull was a carnivore specialized for hunting the giant flightless birds of New Zealand. Its principal prey was the moa, a group of ostrich-like birds, including species that stood up to 3.6 meters tall and weighed as much as 200 to 250 kilograms, or 440 to 550 pounds. But how does a bird that weighed 10 to 15 kilograms take down an animal 10 or 15 times heavier? The answer lies in strategy and sheer power. Like a stealthy ambush predator, Haas seagull likely hunted by perching high on a tall tree or cliff and watching for moa moving below in open glades. Paleontological studies suggest it would dive down at speeds up to 80 km per hour or 50 miles per hour and strike into the moa's hindquarters with incredible force. One curator noted that a blow from this eagle was like dropping a large stone from a great height onto its target. The impact could knock a moa off balance or seriously injure it. The eagle's huge talons acted like grappling hooks. It would latch onto the victim with a vice-like grip. Unable to outright lift such heavy prey, Haas seagull relied on delivering critical wounds. Evidence indicates it aimed for the back or hindquarters and may have driven its talons into the moa's pelvis and legs to immobilize it. It then likely used a technique unlike any other eagle today. Rather than killing solely with its feet, it delivered the final blow with a powerful bite to the neck or head of the prey. Computer modeling of Haas seagull shows its beak was capable of a death bite, crushing vital areas even as its talons held the struggling prey down. Once the mole was subdued, Haas seagull fed in a style more akin to vultures. Its strong hooked bill could slice into the carcass, 
and a bird would thrust its head deep inside to devour organs and muscles rich in nutrients. With no large land scavengers around, a harsh seagull could monopolize a kill for days, feasting at leisure with our competition. While humans were not its usual prey, researchers point out that an eagle capable of killing a 200 kg mower could easily view a 50 to 80 kg human as potential prey. In Maori oral histories, there are indeed accounts of giant birds attacking and even carrying off people. It's likely that Haas Seagull very occasionally targeted small humans such as children if the opportunity arose. Whether or not such attacks were common, the overlap of eagles and humans was brief, and as we'll see next, ultimately fatal for the eagles. Starting an online store can feel overwhelming, but with Odoo, you can launch your e-commerce business in just four simple steps. No coding, no hassle, just an intuitive AI-powered setup that makes everything easy. First, Odoo's website configurator guides you through the setup. Choose your industry, select your colors, pick your features, and let AI generate the structure for you. Then it's just a matter of dragging and dropping your text, images, and branding into place. Want a professional looking store without hiring a developer? This is how you do it. Next, adding products is effortless. Just click new, then click products, enter the name and price, add a picture, and it's live. Want to enhance it? Upload product images, write a description, and customize the layer with drag and drop content blocks. Even better, if you have a barcode, just scan it and Odoo fetches product details online automatically. Now, let's make sure customers can actually buy from you. Odoo integrates with major payment providers like Stripe and supports shipping carriers like Australia Post, DHL, and FedEx. Just configure your payment and delivery options and you're ready to start making sales. Plus, invoicing is built in, so you don't have to worry about setting up a separate billing software. And that's it, your e-commerce site is up and running. Odoo gives you your first app free for life, with unlimited hosting and support. That means you can start selling without worrying about monthly costs. Plus, as your business grows, Odoo grows with you. Add new apps anytime for inventory, accounting, marketing, and more. So if you're ready to launch your online store without the headaches, check out Odoo today. Your website, invoicing, payments, and shipping, all in one place, starting for free. Thank you Odoo for sponsoring this video. Haas Seagull thrived in New Zealand's isolated ecosystems for millennia, yet it vanished startlingly fast after humans arrived. This apex predator became extinct roughly 500 to 600 years ago, around 1400 to 1450 AD, which is almost exactly the time that its main prey, the moa, were hunted to extinction. The timing is no coincidence. The early Polynesian people reached New Zealand around the 13th century, and their impact on the native fauna was swift and devastating. The extinction of Haas Seagull was driven by a combination of human activities and ecological upheaval. The Maori hunted all species of moa relentlessly for food. Within about 150 to 200 years, every moa species had been wiped out. Haas Seagull, being highly specialized to hunt large, flightless birds, suddenly had nothing left in its weight class to feed on. Unlike humans who could switch to other food sources, the eagle could not easily adapt to hunting smaller prey in sufficient quantities. The collapse of the mole populations meant starvation for the giant eagles. The new settlers also burned large areas of forest to clear land or drive game, particularly in a drier eastern South Island where the eagles lived. The result was a loss of habitat for both the eagles and their prey. Charcoal layers and pollen records show massive fires and deforestation in New Zealand shortly after human arrival. An ecosystem that had been dense woodland became more open scrub and grassland, further reducing cover and food for the eagle's prey. Maori brought the Polynesian rat and later Europeans introduced other mammals. Rats would have raided ground nests, eating eggs and chicks of many birds. While we don't know exactly where Haas seagull nested, possibly on cliffs or large tree nests, the presence of novel mammalian predators and competitors certainly didn't help. The eagle had evolved in an environment without rodents or carnivorous mammals, so even a single rat species could have impacted its reproduction by preying on eggs or the chick's food sources. Finally, although humans probably did not hunt Haas eagles as food, they likely killed them when they posed a threat or when encountered. Maori midden sites have yielded Haas seagull bones, including some made into tools indicating that people did sometimes kill these birds. One legend recounts how a warrior band had to slay a giant eagle that had been menacing the area. Large raptors can also be very sensitive to low population densities and slow breeding, 
with perhaps only a few hundred breeding pairs in a whole country at any time. Even modest human pressures could fatally tip the balance for the species. In essence, the arrival of humans shattered the delicate equilibrium that had allowed Haas's eagle to prosper. By around 1440 CE, the mole were gone, and the great eagle soon followed into oblivion. When European scientists learned of Maori legends of a giant man-eating bird, they were skeptical. Until 1871, when Sir Julius von Haast received bones unearthed from a Canterbury swamp and realised they belonged to an enormous eagle. Haast's eagle is an evolutionary marvel. DNA analysis has revealed a surprising origin. This giant evolved from much smaller eagle ancestors. Its closest living relative is not a huge eagle like the African Marshall or Australian wedge-tailed eagle, but rather a humble little eagle from Australia. Scientists estimate that a few million years ago, a little eagle, weighing under 1.5 kilograms, colonised New Zealand and, upon finding abundant prey and no competition, rapidly grew in size through natural selection. In a span of perhaps 700,000 to 1.8 million years, its average weight exploded by 10 to 15 fold, the fastest evolutionary increase in body size known for any vertebrate. This is a dramatic example of island gigantism and ecological release, where an isolated environment allows a species to expand into a vacant niche. Haas Siegel became, in effect, the analogue of a big cat in New Zealand's ecosystem, a role no other eagle elsewhere has ever taken. It was the only eagle to become the top predator in a complex ecosystem dominated by birds. In summary, Haas Siegel was an apex aerial predator like no other, a giant eagle that hunted monster birds in a land with no mammals. With its powerful build, razor-sharp talons, and surprisingly vulture-like habits, it perfectly adapted to prehistoric New Zealand's challenges. Yet, within a couple of centuries of human arrival, both the eagle and its prey were gone, leaving only bones and legends. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And as always, thanks for watching.